we jump into today's episode, we just want to remind you to rate and review our podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And if you're up to it, follow us on TikTok and Instagram at HBO Girls Rewatch. And if you care about us even a little tiny bit, subscribe to our YouTube page. Hey, I think it's time to lean into Lena now. Let's get into that episode. Welcome back to HBO, HBO Girls, Girls Rewatch. I'm Amelia. And I'm Evan. And today, what episode are we covering, Evan? Oh my god, it's season three, episode nine, Flow. Um, it's really funny because um actually I forgot what the next episode was because kind of when I leave the city, it's like you don't always remember chronologically what's gonna happen next. So we read the title like Flow. We're like, oh, it's an episode about periods. And then I'm like, no, it's Grandma Flow, LOL. It's so crazy that it's Grandma Flow, which means she is Aunt Flow for some. No, yes, she's the yeah, <laughs> for some. I'm like, no, and you're, you're actually making amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, really quick, you guys, if you are used to watching us on Spotify video, we transferred networks, and so our video is just going to be on YouTube for the next little bit, um, but it will be back up in video mode soon. We think. <laughs> we think. It's in beta testing right now. Yeah, we're a part of something called a beta test. We always are in beta, and nothing goes well when we're in beta. Why is this mic being crazy? It's flaccid. Um, anyways, uh, if you do want to watch the video version, we post everything on YouTube um, and it is ad free over there. So check it out. Otherwise, listen to us in your ears. And yeah, we're excited. You have for- a really good podcast voice. Thank you so much. I loved our guest last week being like, you're a news reporter. You're a news reporter. <laughs> Literally, you're giving it to us live. It's perfect. I think mean, also if you listen to episode season one, we're so much more vocal fry heavy. Oh, really? You think we've gotten less fried? I think we've gotten less fried. We're more sunny side these we're days. We're oven baked. <laughs> we're oven baked. <laughs> yeah, we're oven baked. We're, we're Benedict. We're Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, no, so- cut back. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you, Evan? What's new? Um... I mean, there's just so much impending doom where we currently live. So, I, not to go into too much detail, but of course, there's a terrorist attack um, threatening our neighborhood right now. And um, instead of um, me, of course, going to a friend's place, my mom um, offered for me to leave the city and go to her house. I'm like, well, I got a podcast episode to record, so I guess that's worth my life. <laughs> I know. It's so interesting because there's so many things to complain about that are big and small in the world. And I spent a lot of yesterday complaining about small things. And then Evan let me know our neighborhood might specifically yeah, be targeted <laughs> um, and exploded. And that really s- didn't put things in perspective no. the way it should have. Um, can I say one thing? Yeah. Sorry not to cut off a woman. Um, but Amelia came home from 16 Candles and not the best of moods. And then she's like, this is a little thing for sending her off a little bit yesterday. And I was like, hey, girl, totally leveling with you. Just quick second. Um, our neighborhood is being threatened with terrorism. Not to worry. It's like our fri- our freezer had already, yeah. like, I had to <clears throat> boil water and pour it in our freezer and stab with the knife to get these big chunks of ice out so I could close the drawer. And I was like... This night can't get worse. <laughs> and then Evan was like, by the way, we might be a part of a threat right now. No, it's a threat. We should note that I did quit Lexapro four days ago <laughs> and I haven't stopped crying since. It's so cool. Lexapro reveal. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> SSRI <laughs> withdrawal. SSRI <laughs> withdrawal check. Um, I am bursting into tears over anything and everything. Did this episode make you cry at all? Honestly, it was a very emotional episode for me. The first time I watched it, I was like, this is really fucking scary and sad. And the second time I watched it, I was like, this is hilarious. Hilarious. It's no hilarious. Oh my god, Such a Does funny Lena, episode, but really sad. Lena Dunham and, really knows how to talk about something serious in a very funny and punchy way, in a way that most people, I'd argue, don't. I would say no one does. Grey's Anatomy is never being silly. It's never been silly once, except when the doctors are making out in um, a canteen. None but aren't they being serious sense. about that? Yeah, they're really Even seriously making Meredith out. Even when Meredith and Sandra O oh dance, it's serious. <sighs> when Marnie and Hannah dance, it's not so serious. I will say this. Sometimes they're a little bit silly in um, how to get away with murder in a way they don't do in Grey's Anatomy. So Shonda Rhimes has dimension. And Bridgerton sometimes are a little silly too. 
Okay, perfect. I love Shonda Land. <laughs> we do a Shonda podcast next. <laughs> Literally. When <laughs> Billy on the Street, Billy Eichner show. <gasps> that could be our next rewatching. <laughs> rewatching Billy on the Street. When Billy on the Street did a special episode where they made Rachel Dratch go through a Shonda Land obstacle course, it changed the course of my life forever. <laughs> In which way? So he's explaining how now. It was just, you can't just say that. I was That's just a big like, thing to say. So if you're gonna you're gonna back it up, girl. Oh, oh our guest is here. Our guest is now, here. Now no one will know why, how Shondaland changed my friend Amelia. You put your hands together, together for, for Richard Perez. Hello. Oh my god, they have Hello. a show at the Bell House. Oh, we I, we never know how to plug it. And then we accidentally <laughs> never give our friend um, any no. credit. So here's the thing. Richard does comedy in so real life funny. as well. Mm. And they have a show called I Have to Do This or Okay. I have to do this. I have to do this, um, which I've already seen. Have you seen? I've seen it twice. Um, but if you haven't seen it, like you're being weird, go see it. Um, it's gonna be at the Bell House. And no, 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 Union no Hall. Union Hall. It's gonna be at. <laughs> it's gonna be at Union Hall. I'm gonna take care of it. <laughs> I, <I'm> gonna... <laughs> <laughs> hey folks, it's Richard here. Um, <laughs> my, um, I have a show called I Have to Do This. It's like a play, kind of. That's so bad. <laughs> I can do we this. We shouldn't talk about this. this. Yeah, wait, actually, no, I, November we, we 10th did... Bell House, actually. No, Union Hall. I thought November 10th was Bell. No. Oh, 10 seconds ago. No. The story changes no, no, no. so quick with you, Richard. It, uh, November okay so on November 10th <laughs> part of New York Comedy Festival at Union Hall you can catch my show I have to do this um, I think and the show is at, at 7pm you can also go to Bell House Richard won't be there but I won't be, be there really big. Yeah, but you can, I'm sure there's something going on there <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like if you can't make it to Richard's show, at least try to see live comedy. Just see something on November 10th. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but we're so excited to hear to have them here today. <laughs> I, I can believe a word that just came out of your we're mouth. We're so excited to have Richard here today to talk <laughs> girls with us. We're literally talking about like such a random specific episode with you, which is going to be so fun. Um, is your grandma dead? Don't answer that. Okay. Um, but before we dive into the episode, we'd love to know like what's your journey with girls? Like when did you first get to know about it? So I moved here in 2011. I went to art school at Pratt Ooh. Institute. Oh my God. Our future roommate went to Pratt. Or, in a month. Oh, you're going to live with? Mm-hmm. Um, and that show came out like in 2012. Mm-hmm. And so like I just, I didn't watch it when it was out. I didn't have HBO or anything. <laughs> so like... I feel like I, I would passively get to watch it a little bit with my friends who were like, yeah, I mean, up you're on it. Everyone there's watching was on it. Girls. Yeah. On so it. like, <laughs> so if I'm like going to someone's apartment to like hang out, they were right. like, oh, we're watching girls. And I would, what was f- interesting was there's this restaurant, Speedy Romeo's in Clinton Hill. And that's where they film where Hannah works, the, ca- the coffee yeah, shop. Yeah, it's Ray's. When Ray. they open up Ray's, so it's not Cafe Grumpy, but when Ray's gets its own independent coffee yes. shop, they film it there. At Speedy Romeo's. Wow. And I remember, like, always, like, I got a friend who lived, like, two blocks away. Is and like Speedy I would, Romeo's? I hear Speedy Romeo or Speedy Romeo's. I've heard both. I called it Speedy Romeo's. I, I'm going to go with you. Yeah. I'm going to go with you. Yeah. Wow, so you went so, to so there? I, so I walked by there all the time. Wow. And there... <laughs> <laughs> that's my relationship with the show is i walked by speedy romeo's all the time while they're filming and i was like what's going on oh there? my god while they were filming yeah it'd be closed down like all the time it's a pizza place mm-hmm. every scene in that shop was just like one of the girls quitting yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah definitely <laughs> definitely back. Back. yeah wait so then, did- then i did i did f- in like 2019 i was like house sitting slash cat sitting for someone for a month and she had like everything on her tv Uh so i i was like oh yeah let me watch girl so i binged pretty much like the whole show except the last season that one i didn't i didn't get to watch yeah it's important not to watch that one really no 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 you guys (laughs) should And we can't wait. And we can't wait for season six. <laughs> but it is like season six bums everyone out. I have a good time. Yeah. I've, I've never I heard not. how it ends. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like yeah. not ideal. 
Okay. okay, so we are covering today season three, episode nine, Flow. And here is our synopsis. Ready, set, go. Hannah's got a salad and her mom's calling her. Uh oh. I am, mom, grandma Flo is in trouble. And you know what? She's going to have to run off to Ohio or Pennsylvania. They don't really say, and I'm just taking a guess based off the environment. And grandma's sick and all the aunts are uh, sick in the head too. Um, and she's in the hospital and her mom's like, can we go get a food? I think I need to go eat something. You're like, eat something off the tray. She's and like, then no Lorene is like, well, I'm so sad my mom's dying because I really thought she would apologize to me for being a terrible mother, but now she never will because she'll be dead. And Hannah's like, oh no. And then Lorene is like, can you tell grandma that you're marrying Adam? Like she needs this win. And Hannah's like, no, that's anti-feminist and bad. And then Hannah goes and uh, catches up with her cousin, Rebecca, who's studying for med school. And then her cousin, um, they, they uh, bond, but don't and but do. <laughs> and then um, they get into a car accident. And then Re um, Ray, Adam, <laughs> comes to see them. And then he's like, okay, fine, I'll lie. And I'll, I'll do the thing. And then they go, they tell the grandma, like, hey, we're going to get married. And then she dies. Period. I miss so much. There's well, definitely okay. like so many and gaps. Like, I think we need a minute of silence now for us to think yeah. about what happened. <laughs> just to fill in a few little gaps it's like also a huge part of this episode was seeing Hannah's sister Hannah's mom Lorraine's two sisters Sissy and Margot fight yes. so they are kind of like sitting at home fighting about like when she dies who's gonna get what there's this whole fight about who's gonna get this ring and it's like Sissy doesn't have any kids and lives at home and doesn't have a job and then Margot's husband left her and her daughter is studying for medical school but she's a bitch and then Lorene is of course like Hannah's a free spirit and I hate his boy her boyfriend but they fight and then they really get in a fight once they all once Hannah and Rebecca get in a car crash and the nurse is like can you stop and Margaret yes. is like do not fucking touch me bitch and then Adam's like it's fine like this is what my parents are like on enchilada night <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my god that was really that's good really good yeah, yeah. 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 Up good in memory <laughs> that was fun <laughs> <laughs> but overall, it's like they lie about the marriage thing, and yes. then it's like she magically recovers from pneumonia. Yeah, and she's everybody. Like, I feel great. I had a cheese sandwich. I feel fabulous. Yeah, she's like, I love cheese sandwiches. And then the sisters are like, Sorry, we fought. Like, like why do we? We need to hang out. Let's more. hang out. Yeah. And then Hannah gets back to the city, is like getting out of Grand Central, and Re cousin Rebecca calls and is like, Actually, she's dead. She just had a heart attack. And I love heart the way Rebecca talks. Me too. Yeah, it's yeah. Harsh. I love that direct, like... Oh, God, that girl Did you guys have awesome. captions on for this? Because I didn't know pneumonia was spelt like that. I didn't realize it was P-H. I've always spelt it with an M. Oh, pneumonia? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't pneumonia? realize it was P-H. I don't know where the M is. I thought it was P-N. It, it I think might it be is. from P-N. Oh, it is Pneumonia? No, yeah, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had it's, pneumonia in second grade and had to go to the hospital. And they said so I'd have to scary. stay there for four days. But I was acting too happy. So they sent me home after 20 hours. Because <laughs> I kept pressing the button being like, bluebell ice cream. <laughs> it's heaven for you. It was <laughs> honestly heaven. Bluebell ice cream. <laughs> My mom's boyfriend at the time got me Chick-fil-A. I was like, I love it here. <laughs> Um, but I got back to second grade and every single kid in my class also had pneumonia. So there was only like eight out of like 23 of us there. So instead of learning stuff, we just like played Mancala for a week. Wait, what is pneumonia? Like, what does that feel like? It's respiratory. Um, it's all ch I think all it's, chest. it's like phlegmy. It's respiratory. It's, it's like fever. a really painful cough. Oh, okay. Mm. Like a dry cough where you're like, oh, I'm just a girl. Fuck. Fuck. It makes you question your gender. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just a girl. All I remember, all I remember is I got really into ego waffles. Mm. That's like the only thing I would eat. A big part of disease in them, it gives you dysphoria of gender. I love that. I wish I had Disney Channel when I had pneumonia. I was just re-watching PBS Kids because, you know, they played the same episode <sighs> twice, three hours apart. So I was like watching the same episode of Barney in the morning and in the early afternoon. I was like, this is hell. I already saw this one. <laughs> Uh, more blue bell. That's um, your tag for the whole episode. <laughs> more blue bell. I was like just sick. I know. That sucks. Are you and, still like, feeling co like symptomatic, foggy? Uh, yeah, like a little like I feel just like hazy, or I feel like mm. I'm like not like I don't know, not sharp. Can I? Oh, I'll tell you what's really helped me. 
Honestly, you get the steps in. Get your steps like in. Go for a little lot. run. Go for yeah. a little walk. Honestly, and also a really good exercise. I don't know if listeners care about this at home, but actually building up um, right now because your capillaries and your brain is are so expanded from the brain fog. Actually, if you like, there's you don't breathe through your mouth. You just like breathe through your nose for twenty minutes and go for a brisk walk. And it'll actually increase the CO two in your body, which will make the veins smaller and shrink them a bit and with the inflammation in your brain it'll actually help with your brain fog i found that to be really useful interesting i'm really big into googling things when i'm capillaries sick. but like it wasn't covid i know but still but brain still fog. like you have like yeah, that yeah, symptom yeah. anyways yeah 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 i found that to be really helpful but like you but did you have when you were really sick did, it was, was the flu it? actually it was the flu it flew it flew followed by mouth ulcers followed by um thumb infection Jesus. Yeah. My host or did not mention that. What? No, it is crazy <laughs> that you guys had the same illness yeah, we and had nobody else illness. in the town did. No one. Okay, have you been to an open mic right now? I know you haven't, but have you I, every single person has the sniffles? Every I'm like, I can't <sighs> look at these people right now because they're all they're like, You're actually sick, go home. Yeah. Please. It's not worth your three minutes of bombing for me to get cold. <sighs> Say that. Say that. Say that. Speak upon it. The three girls that have been wearing N95s every mic since I, I met them are in the right right now. I'm like, work girls. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are geniuses. Y'all are operating up here. Um, but this isn't a science podcast. It's a girls podcast. And we have to get back to the question. Girl, girl what girl, girl are you? you? I feel like... The girls, hmm. Okay, I, okay. <laughs> yeah. I feel like growing up, <clears throat> I was very drawn to the Jessa character type or whatever. Or even like when I first heard of the show and I like watched like the pilot or something, like I was always drawn to this type of like chaotic but mysterious personality character mm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I have met people, made friends throughout my life that like have that kind of vibe but that was never me like i don't think that was even though i tried but i'm like i don't know i think as i've gotten older i feel like i like step a little more into like a shoshana-ness totally. or something <laughs> or whatever i think is a little bit of my journey but for sure i have marnie and um hannah tendencies totally like Actually, absolutely you said like you i'm said, like yeah. cringe and like <laughs> oh, you know totally. like and, the, and there's like i don't know like there is like a self like importance or, or like a thing that's like I, I like an ambition of some sort or like a yeah. like a I don't know, like a, a testament to like something to prove to You're yourself. Like stubborn to like prove something to myself, yeah, or something totally. that I get in my own way a little bit. Find out November tenth at Union Hall. <laughs> <laughs> was that an answer? Or was that, that was really okay. yeah. I think it is such a thing to be young and be like. I want to be Jessa when I grow up. Well, you're and, a prat. And then yes, you, I was a prat. And then you grow up and you're like, I think I'm okay being a Shosh. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I want to, because I feel like Sh Shoshana, I get the vibe that, I haven't watched the show in a, in a while, but like, I get the vibe that from what I remember, she, I feel like she like knows herself like pretty well. Like, herself like, is a basic bitch, but she knows that and she loves it. Yeah, like she's like very like, this is what I want. Like, this mm -hmm. is who I am. And they all kind of have that, but I think it manifests differently. Totally. Yeah, she's trying to have this real naivete, which I think like she really isn't like clouded in the same way these characters are with like emotional ambiguity and like overcomplication of thought and like, like one's questioning of identity. Shoshana is so firm in her identity in so many ways because she's not often like challenged in it. And I mm. think as we kind of go yeah. further in the show, we definitely see a little bit more of this going on. But she's a very privileged jewish girl at nyu surrounded by other really privileged jewish girls at nyu living in her bubble in manhattan or like her identity really never has to be questioned. an attainable plan yeah so it's like she doesn't have to be questioned her it's identity so true in the yeah. same way that other girls do who are like in the real world and like trying to like they thought they were going to be like they, hannah thought yes. becoming a writer wasn't going to be yeah. so hard right she's like i'm a writer that's how it works and then marnie of course going from like 
being this really type A to being like, I want to do music. And then Jessa being like, oh, feeling like free is actually bad. I should choose something. Totally. Yeah. In college, you kind of know exactly what you're renewing. And the day you graduate, you're like, oh, I didn't realize there was actually jobs to be obtained. They don't tell you a single job that exists in the actual job market the four years you're in college until the moment you graduate. And you're like, here's all the jobs you could apply to. And it's like, I didn't study anything of the sort. How would anyone even obtain this job? Because it's actually not a degree you can achieve. This is by my experience. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, I've kind of had like, because like I went to art school and yeah, I had like you study like photography. Draw, photography. And I literally was like, oh, I'm set. I know my life path. I know what this is forever or something. Like that's what I thought at like 18 and yeah. even then, like 23 too, or, you know. And, um, and so I like, I think that it's just like part of like adulthood mm. in, in, a, in a really general way. Like, it's just like you have an idea of something and then you just like need experience to kind of shift it or it's going to shift kind of inevitably. Totally. That's and so then beautiful. you're like, oh, wait, like actually like there's this other part or these other things that I haven't even unlocked yet. And then when they do, then it's like you, I don't know, you kind of realize more and more like what you actually want from life i guess i'm like did you hear that full body chills did you just hear that my heart chakra all the 19 open. year olds listening fainting so maybe on the i'm subway. not shoshana <laughs> <laughs> so my answer is like i don't know so actually, my answer is i don't know who i don't know flow. who i am yeah oh my yeah, god you're flow. i'm grandma flow <laughs> i'm flow <laughs> you're kind of rebecca oh i was i was gonna say i was gonna say i literally wrote in my notes um can you ask me the question Girl, what girl are you? <laughs> this is word for word what I wrote in my notes. Rebecca as fuck. <laughs> I always turn something into a rant about woman's oppression, and I'm always inviting people I can't stand to get drinks with me. <laughs> like, I'm always like, so do you want to go out? And they're yeah. like, are we in a fight? And I'm like, no. No, but it's a thing to do. Do you like, want to hang let's out? Go. Yeah. And like, the, way no. she, the way Hannah's like, that's so cool, med school. Like, are you having fun? And she's like, it's not about it's having not about fun. fun. Yeah. It's about being a woman that is taking power. I love that she's She's like, she's like, I'm not getting a drink. She's like, I have, I have school. I'm like busy. And she's like, why did you tell us to come to a bar? Because that's what you would want. Because that's the kind of girl that you are. Or something yeah. like that. And Hannah's oh. like, I have one sip of alcohol and feel sick. Like, yeah. Hannah's not that girl. She's not. You know what? I'm kind of Rebecca because so I'm mostly sober. But I will tell my friends, let's go to a bar. And I like watch totally. them drink the beer. I'm like, I want, I at least need me a sip of this. Let's pass around. Everyone gets a sip of one beer. We can all just communally share that it. That is so you. Evan will always be like, can we go to this bar on the way home? And I'm like, are you going to buy a drink there? And they're like no and i'm like <laughs> then why yeah i five yeah i, I don't it's a drink for someone like you okay. no. <laughs> honestly I f i'm like figuring that out with myself like mm. i i've i like i have stopped drinking like it's been like almost four years and like mm. but going out and stuff like that like or dates to like figuring out dating yeah. like sober. Well, I'm like tell people where I saw you last night. I was at Singers. Well, even at a bar. At a bar. <laughs> we ran into each other at so a bar. So were you at a bar. both at which, Singers bar, which not I was drinking like, alcohol? I had, a drink. Yeah. I had one drink. Okay. I had a um, <laughs> I had a mocktail. Cute. Ooh. It was yummy. It no, was like a phony, so fun, phony man. Negroni type of thing. The things that were happening in the backyard were amazing and horrifying and I, I what did, was it it was like a performance there was a guy with seven balloons taped to his head um running around being like come to garbage fest and then i'm screaming his like um experimental music i was just like <laughs> and then also i'm going <laughs> um for and then, then there's eight different acts of that same exact thing <laughs> wow i wish i i didn't see it no i like but, i didn't go to the backyard the last but, but i feel like i would have been like oh, we're in you girls like it <laughs> <laughs> OMG, you guys, we're in girls. Don't freak out. You're, You're the one comedian that could actually perform there because they would like your stuff. <laughs> Everyone else would hate. They hate comedians at this bar, except Richard's stuff is so like experimental, fun acting. Like that's what they would be drawn to. Everyone else would want to literally. You need a missile. backyard show at Singers. You need yeah, a backyard yeah. show at Singers. So intimate. But the last yeah. time I went there, a guy put his fist all the way through his butt to his esophagus. I heard about this. Yeah, we, you were telling me. I was telling it you. was really. <gasps> weird to witness that's it yeah. seemed painful but also he seemed fine no he how were you feeling it. during it 
Um, Amelia never saw fisting before. Yeah. So she was a think... girl interrupted. I've heard a lot about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard a lot about fisting, but to see it actually go down. Yeah, I've, n- I've never seen it in it's... person. Yeah, I've never seen it in person. I've seen it in P-O-R-N. Porn. Porn. Okay. <laughs> That's like P-O-R-N. Yeah. <laughs> What girl are you this week? Okay, I'm sissy. We all know this. You're Emma's pointing sissy? a finger at me. I'm sissy. Sorry I didn't get married, but I'm in a very loving relationship with Joe. And like I'm in the house from the grandma and I'm giving her her pills. You are mm. so getting the ring. I'm so getting the ring. Yes. I'm or like, maybe what's the other what's the other on It's scene? Margo. I'm kind of Margo, honestly. Like Margo just I'm the way there. she says fuck. The way she's like fuck. Fuck. Yeah. I'm like, girl, work. Which yeah, is that the I relate to. And her mouth gets so big. She almost swallows the nurse. Her mouth gets so <laughs> big. Oh, yeah, the shot where she's just stretching her mouth at the hospital. Yeah. She's like, yes. <laughs> they got the right actress. She's like, thank God you're here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she just like, that snapped. opening scene, I'm like, this is an amazing acting performance. Yeah, for she's real. Good. She's What's incredible. Yeah. yeah, Margo. I haven't seen her anything else, but I am, a, she's like a, very talented actress. Yeah. I know. I was thinking the ants would be like the most famous people in the world. I'm like, where's Christian Chenoweth? Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my like, God. Because they're, gonna get, they're always getting the famous. I know. People. They got yeah. Amy Schumer, but they can't get someone famous to play that aunt. Ants. I know. Well, I will say I love Amanda Steele. Is that her name? No, that's the Harvard girl. Um, <laughs> Amanda Steele. The girl who plays Rebecca. She's in the To Do List, that Aubrey Plaza movie. Oh, yes. What's her name? She's a good actress, too. Amber Steele? Yeah, she was great. I looked it up. Everyone in it the was Chosky like... The scene literally tears me to my core, but we'll get into I that. I know. Should, yeah. we, should we get into well, it? Well, I guess... Let me... I guess I can't figure out which girl I am. Oh. Oh, right. Right. I'm like, um, you know what? And this is random, but I might be the mom. Lorraine? I might be the mom because I might have to sit down with my you friend. Know what? Yeah. yeah. I'm, thank you. <laughs> I'd like um, for myself a little. Are you feeling the rain in this episode too? Yeah. Like I would sit down Especially and be like, you, me. you're going to have to socialize, Adam. Yeah. I would totally say that to someone. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I can, I do see that for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm someone I feel like who had to like socialize themselves, but I feel fairly socialized. <laughs> except not all the time, but I like can recognize both. I'm, I'm actually, again, I'm, Last episode, I was in the scene. Like, I'm the scene of Hannah and her mom being like, you're going to have to socialize Adam. And the mom's like, and Hannah being like, you don't know a single thing about our relationship. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. That's oh, so true. God. Yeah. I'm being cusped so much recently. Cusp. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to lean into Lena. So before the break, we were kind of discussing the conversation that Loreen has with Hannah at the end, where <clears throat> Adam has come to, because Hannah gets in the car crash. Adam is like, oh no, are you okay? Car crash. <laughs> That's the only text he sends. Oh yeah, oh, car right. crash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, don't send a car and, crash. <laughs> and Adam chooses to lie and say they're getting married to their grandma because um, it would make Loreen and Hannah happy. And then Hannah's like, Mom, isn't he so nice? And she's literally like, Yeah, for now. <laughs> yeah, essentially, which is like real as fuck. It's real as fuck. Yeah. I'm sorry. I have to say I this. Mean, I don't know. Like, yeah. what, what do you think? Is I- I just need to take one step back because this is this is my brain for the last eight years. So finally, thank God I made a platform to talk about it on. How does Adam get to Hannah on that motorcycle quicker than the girls that onset live 20 minutes away? Yeah. Like he's going from New York City on a motorcycle. <laughs> it has never made sense. I think what I've seen once a week. I'm not exaggerating for the last eight years. <laughs> You've been stressed. I've been, been so holding stressed. On to this. Like, you got to either Michigan or Pennsylvania. On a bike, it's, I, they don't really sp- say what state it is. I've listened so many times. It's like Ohio, Pennsylvania, or Michigan. I'm just basing it off vibes. But it's far. And it's, on, it's far. Yeah. And, and somehow he gets from midtown Manhattan to one of these Midwestern states in 28 minutes on a motorcycle that Desi has. First off, does Desi have the most powerful motorcycle on earth? Don't answer that. It's a yes. Um, but still, it's <sighs> not going to be fast enough for him to get all the way to Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh area, seven hours away from the city. I mean, it, again, I know there's continuity error sometimes in this show. Yeah. And I love when you say that word. And I got canceled last time I said that word. <laughs> continuity. Continuity. 
<laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Um, but Evan he, was like, this is a continuity area error and it's a jump cut. <laughs> Maybe it's like a random moment that the writers were like, we're gonna be a cartoon for a second. No, they're Adam I think has so. It's just like just like, to have like one little animated element of like <laughs> of like he got there in like 20 minutes to Michigan. Like the car crash also seems so animated. Like it's yeah. like <laughs> yeah. you guys just did that as a joke. Yeah. <laughs> I love that car crash. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really funny. It's the of all time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, like, slow and loud. Or, I don't know. It's like... No, you're right. It's like... I- <laughs> <laughs> it's like abrupt. Well, because every other car crash on TV is like, whoa! Oh my yeah, God, yeah. Whoa, there's such a build up. Or like, like, yeah. This is like so a so slow like, roll. <laughs> um, like, that's how you would crash a car. Totally. Apparently, they waited till 3 a.m. to fil- film that. Why? Really? Know, know. They wanted the actors to be tired? I don't know. Hannah, in, in Lena, and inside the episode clip was like, we waited till 3, which was hell, but it was also helpful. And I said, be it, girl. Damn. What do you right. think about Lorene being like, don't marry someone like the guy I married? Mm. Wait, is that what she says? Uh, yes. Well, she doesn't say it like that, but it's basically like in the fight with her sister, she's like being like, and my marriage is it's intact. Inti- and the sisters are like, Tad, Tad, the fucking weirdo Tad. And I think like. Lorene is like, don't be like me. Don't marry a guy. You have to socialize. Like, I've been through it and I regret it. And I wish you wouldn't pick the same path. Right. I think it's like, I don't know. I imagine like, I don't know. It reminds me of like my mom sometimes. Like she'll, we have converse, not about dating, but about like other decisions that she's made mm-hmm. or something or mistakes. It's It's almost just like, maybe you just like can't help but just be like, don't do this that Mm. i did or it's hard to like not project your own thing onto like what your kid is doing yeah you know even if they are like similar relationships are totally different well i think the description of the marriage too is like when she's throwing it in her sister's face is being like i'm the only one with an intact marriage which you find out yeah they 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 end up well which we find out gay. gay yeah um but i do think it's like it's interesting that she's describing the actual act of marriage compared to her actual relationship because later on she's saying i had to socialize this man and like she already knows that there's a function in her marriage and it's because he's jay um but um it's just such an interesting thing because she's so it's something she throws in her sister's faces to like cause shame in their lives because it's something she holds over them Mm -hmm. but then in reality she doesn't have the same like backbone with the marriage when she's talking to hannah about it like she's describing the socialization of this man it's kind of an interesting duality we see in a matter of moments. Right. I think Hannah was so emotionally mature for being like, he just did a really nice thing and you're just yes. being really fucking Yeah, mean. and you're being unkind. Yeah. Like- when the aunt's like, Tad, Tad Horvath, catch in a century, body of a gymnast, brain of a toy poodle. <laughs> One of the best lines I've ever heard. It's <laughs> so <laughs> cutting and specific. It's like, last night I met this guy and he has an ex-husband. And the way his description of the husband was, it was, he ate too much salt, which is, of course, one of the most cutting lines. <laughs> it's descriptive of his looks was, he ate too much salt. If somebody said that about me, I would die on the spot. <laughs> and that's your ex-husband. That's your ex-husband. That's like, damn. The most cutting sentence I've ever heard in my, he's bloated. What's the description? Is actually. He eats too much salt. He's bloated. Wait, what was the, gra- the grandma... Grandma Flo pulls Hannah aside and oh is like, my God. one day you're going to marry someone. And you're going to like, oh, hate, wrote it down. you're going to. Someday you will look at him, hating him with every fiber of your being, wishing that he would die the most violent death possible. It will pass. But it'll pass. Yeah. So crazy to say that on your deathbed. Yeah, that's like <laughs> wild. I'm like, they're, I wonder what they're tying thematically or something in this episode. I know. Like, about. There's a lot about marriage in this episode. Yeah. There's a lot about, like, yeah, it's definitely like one of the moms isn't, or one of the aunts isn't married, and that's a whole thing. One's husband right. sucks and is in jail right. or whatever. One is like short. <laughs> Yeah, (laughs) short. I like. I but this is if we um think about it from a lens taking back. This is a setup for marriage story. 
Wow. This, this is, is a preamble to marriage, marriage story. story. Wow. Starring Adam Driver. Um, no, this episode really does feel like uh what's that Tracy Let's Tracy Let's play? It's like August Osage County Girls Edition. Both where of it's us just, are dead staring. <laughs> do you guys know about that play with Girl, Meryl Streep and Julia no. Roberts? No. <laughs> I like don't know anything. Okay. It's like you this. You have a play that you run every week. You're like, and I don't know anything I, about I, these other no, ones. No, I truly know nothing about anything. <laughs> it's like anything. this play all about like family and uh-huh. like, you know, family secrets and like drama. It's like the humans. You guys remember the humans when that was on Broadway? Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and um and for any listeners who want to chat plays like no problem i'm like trying so hard to fight being like i think i've heard of it <laughs> <laughs> basically it's just like it was fun that this episode was like what can we do with these sisters and their drama right there were so many scenes that were very it was girls fighting yeah. There's yeah. no better story than three sisters. Yeah, you for can't real. think of anything I, better than three sisters because they're they're always mad at each other, but they're also coming back and coming family at the end. Yeah. yeah. And you always see that. And there's, it's, I know they're not sisters in the show, but it's bringing up big little lies for me almost the way they mm. react to one another because they killed someone together and that makes them family. Sissy. <laughs> And so I'm not. <laughs> sissy. I'm thinking about sissy, like her whole deal. Like she's really high strung and she's like, I take care of it. It's like, are you guys, sh- wait, do you have siblings? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like what are we supposed to do when our parents become old and we have to take care of them? Like I have four siblings and I'm like, well, who's doing what? Cause yeah. I don't want to do it all. I know. I feel like watching shows like, or movies or I don't know, just seeing like these um relationships between like siblings like when they're like in their 40s 50s 60s and like that they're there's such a like resentment or there's such a there's a, like a well of anger yeah of anger. it's like so like that it's like what like what? but then it's like i don't know sometimes I, i'm trying to think like what movies or shows but it's like i feel like this has this does show up a few times where like someone's it's like a because i'm the one that took care of our parents like dying or yeah. I'm the one that took care. You know, I was the one that was there and you weren't and da, 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 that I'm just like, whoa, mm. like with, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm already the one that organizes Christmas. So I'm pretty sure I know how it's going to go. Yeah. yeah and I'm already gonna... pissed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, whoa. I I just wanted to. Just, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> so what are we thinking? Hey, happen to our parents? Yeah. <laughs> Like, I have oh. to call my mom. <laughs> I know. Can yeah. I have a second? Well, I, I just want to figure out, like, what do we feel like? That's, like, really quick. What do we think that, like, the childhood was like for these girls growing up? Because we really do see Lorraine hold so much resentment for her mother. She's like, my mom was bad. Well, I do think it's very interesting right. the comment that she makes where it's like, when you date married someone for 25 years, one day you'll end up hating them so much with every fiber you're being. And for me, that leaves a lasting impression that, um, this mom was always in a, in a lot of her marriage. She wasn't really in a loving marriage mm-hmm. yeah. for parts of it. And I think she kind of took it out on her kids a little. I think she kind of was an absent mom in some ways. And like, instead of dealing with her marriage and like with her children's problems, she just like took a step back in a way. Like when you're a grandparent, it's so easy. All you have to do is kind of just like smile at a kid and give them a, a high five and you can be an amazing grandparent. But yeah. uh, when you raise someone, it's such a different story and the sanctity and like, care you have to put into that relationship i don't think the mom was there for it so hannah's never going to be able to level with lorraine because right. she has lorraine who's a who only has one child a very hands-on mother very concerned about what it is and there's many points made out throughout the show where she's always trying to not be like her mom like it's not always said but like it's implied and she kind of mentions it here where she's always trying to go out of her way because she feels like parts of herself do remind her of her mother and we really see that, like, come to play here. I, I mean, the scene that comes to mind where it's, like, she, she a hand on season one where she goes home and they're, like, there's food in the fridge. It's, like, her mom would never say that to her, I think. Totally. Flo would never tell Lorraine there's food in the fridge. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're scholars of this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, wait, um, to- you're, like, did you ask me a question? <laughs> So I have this show. Um, on a- <laughs> I leave it. I'm like, they kept wanting to talk about girls. I don't know. This like Lena Dunham. I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> She's naked and dying. 
I oh my god, that. I love that. I love that line. Can everyone reenact their favorite line from an episode? Uh, <laughs> There's so many good ones. This episode does have so many good lines. I love when Aunt Flo is like, you look so nice. What did you do? And Hannah's like, I gained 15 pounds. <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> then she, at the end of the episode, like, But then you? she's like, you don't look good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And she's like, I'm okay. Oh and then she's God. like, sometimes you don't, like someone who tells you, so, like, wait, what is it? She's like, like, Hannah's like, I'm yes. like, I'm fine. Or no, and the, she's like, you. No, the grandma's like, act, they're like, Grandma Flo, you look so good. She's like, yeah, I'm feeling good. And she they were like, that was a close call there. She goes, sometimes people don't know what they're talking about. And yeah. then Hannah's like, yeah, you're right. Sometimes people have no idea what they're talking about. And then I think literally the next scene, she's like, Dead. gets the call. <laughs> yeah. Anna is so girls girl towards her grandma. Like when her grandma's like, they put rods in my femur. And Hannah's like, that just doesn't seem like a you thing. Like, <laughs> like yeah. I'm like, you're so silly girl. It smells yeah. like you're in a room. She's like, can we deal with the smell? And the aunt's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, wow. No, do you have any quote? I love the quote. Um, well, should we talk about Rebecca actually? Yeah. Let's do Rebecca so then we can kind of just do have fun at the end. Okay. This amazing Let's quote do something from, serious and then we can from do From Hannah when she's talking to Rebecca. Yeah. I didn't make I didn't mean to make your life ridiculous and about sex. Hannah, <laughs> 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 uh, you kill me, girl. Um so Rebecca is Margot's daughter, and as we know, Margot's a little bit angry. Yeah. Margot's helicopter. Yeah, she has this like she has a well fire. Of, yeah, fire. Yeah. Uh, but she's the way pissed. she says fuck, I can't get over it. Are you fucking kidding me? No, I'm not. Fuck. I know. Yeah. She's like, Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, so intense. I watched it, I was like, that's the first time I've heard this word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but her husband, I guess, committed what was it? Insider trading. Insider trading. And then Hannah told her her cousin, which, when her, when Rebecca was six and Hannah was seven, Hannah was like, your dad got arrested for insider training and you'll never see him again. And she didn't. Yeah. It's funny where she's like, you didn't have to tell me I never see him again, but it's like, you didn't see him again. I know. The way it's Hannah so stands funny. her ground, she's like, and did seven-year-old me lie? Damn. Mm. And Aunt Margaret's like, fuck you. You're actually so Hannah coded for that because that's something exactly you would do. That is so 100% true. You know what? Death always brings people together. Mm. <laughs> and sure. my um years ago, my great grandma passed away and she like we had a service for her in Maine cuz like we have family there that were like taking care of her for like for a long time. And my mom was like she basically like raised my mom. Mm. So my mom was like devastated and like we all went um we like, and we've never taken trips before, like mm-hmm. as a family, like, and so we like got a like hotel. We like did that for the very first time, or I don't know, but it was such an interesting experience. Like I saw like my other cousin, like this more even, even more distant cousins who like I hadn't seen since I was like really little, and I was like probably like twenty four at the time or something, and um, a few of them like I don't know, like it was just like meeting as adults like it was it just felt like totally like i don't know there was like two of them that i really clicked with and i was like whoa like (laughs) you were here this whole time like (laughs) and like we we just like i don't know like all three of us are queer and all three of us are like i don't know we like shared this like way of just communicating or just getting along and it was so i don't know and we did keep up for a little bit yeah then we kind of sometimes fell off families but... right in front of you yeah sometimes whoa whoa yeah no it is crazy to like not talk to someone for a really long time and then re-meet them and be like we actually have so much in we common. actually have so much in common yeah i guess that happens also in other in like other high ways. school yeah. college people like out of nowhere so once in a while you'll like reconnect with someone or you'll encounter again and then you're like wait totally oh yeah i vibe with you 50 well, percent of people marry someone they went to high school with or they met before the age of 18 Isn't that very interesting? really well i think what you're talking like you have this commonality with your cousins just because your family and like something about when you're growing up and the way that you're just formed psychologically and like your fundamental truths um it's just like that can come from an environment you live in or the family that you have so like, just coming together with these people 
inevitably just because if you're from the same area or you have the same familiar like you have familiar relationships with them you're just going to end up like having some kind of click that you wouldn't have with everyone else mm. like so when i meet people fr- that are like jewish from the same area that i live in i'm like oh i fundamentally understand this person and there's always like a kind of a click mm. i wonder if it's like if you meet someone from texas who's um um, was also um, a child of divorce. You might immediately have community with them. <laughs> That's your definition for me. Yeah, no, I, I definitely always really connect when somebody uh, like was really Christian as a teenager and then stopped, or they're from the South. It's relatable as hell. Yeah. Okay. Re- this is a classic thing where people are like, is Hannah Jewish? Rebecca proves the point that Hannah is Jewish because it's the most Jewish coded character we've seen in the show yet. A girl who really cares about med school. I'm Jewish, I can say this. A girl who really cares about med school in the way that she will destroy everyone else in her life in order to be top of her class. This girl is like neurotic and not a funny way. And her whole presence is that like she's just so academically focused because she sees the failures of her mother. Yeah. And she wants to be completely different from her. But she also has never seen which, a normal relationship. Which we were saying like yeah. Hannah has something is like similar in that way. Yeah. Really. Well, and the girl's never seen a normal relationship, and that's why she's okay dating a boy only on a Wednesday. Do you think because <gasps> Hannah's parents are um, professors, Hannah is like those who can't teach and is like freaked out by that? <gasps> Ooh. Whoa, wait, wait, repeat that? So you know the phrase like those who can't teach and no, Hannah- those who can't do teach. Those who can't do teach. And so Hannah's parents are professors. So And she's like, I don't want to do that. And she's like, like I, I don't want to do. I want to be the person. Yeah. And then there's also like the parents resenting their daughter for believing they could choose something creative when they themselves chose to teach. Right, right. So I wonder if there's tomosity there. And I think that is a parallel with Ooh. Rebecca in med school and like her parents parents fucking up and her being like well i'm gonna build myself such a steady life that nothing can happen because i'm so rich and successful that like anyone who shoots me from any way like i have a barrier up fuck I you're think- so like, smart God, you're so smart <laughs> for real like that is like yeah yeah totally. i just feel like when i was in high school i was so like i would cry if i got below like a 95 on something because i was so determined to be so perfect so i could build whatever i want for myself so i could never have to worry about anything and no one could ever be mad Ooh. at me and it's like so from a place of like fear of like ever messing up like nothing catching you and it's like why did i feel that way it wasn't that <laughs> it was person. never that dramatic right <laughs> well, amelia, can you leave the antidote amelia did an iq test she got ended up in the 92nd percentile which is go her so smart girl alive but she also graduated top eight percent of her class so parallels do exist Wow. For me to graduate in eight percent of my class and then take the IQ test and get like eight percent just felt a little bit <laughs> upsetting. <laughs> and I tend to. Wait, what's the line you said? Where you're like, I'm smart, but not the smartest. <laughs> I'm smart, but not the smartest, and I'm always befriending people that are 99th percentile and wondering why I'm always mad at them. <laughs> 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 it's like just wanting to be so like protected by something. Yeah. You know. Like so, like it's like I don't, I remember this is like random, but like I remember being in therapy once and being like, I just want to be like financially stable enough that I never have to ask anyone for anything ever again. Yeah. And the therapist was like, Why don't you think you can ask other people for anything? And I was like, Totally. I think a billionaire walked away in a mansion. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm one like, in, no one out. I'm like, who cares if there's no one in my life to like pick me up from the airport? I'll have a driver. You're gonna and get- I was like, girl, <laughs> what? Oh my God. have a friend that'll come. I know that's how all billionaires operate. I it's know. like they want to be rich to protect themselves and then they have no friends. Yeah. And then they really end up like getting really buff, but um never being able to like have a normal relationship. It turns out the world living in this world's about having community not about being rich i know yeah but it'd be cool to be in a rich community am i right <laughs> high five <man. laughs> um, all right um Ooh, is in, it time? Adv- in advocacy group for the childless so who funny. said that was margo yeah Sissy. wait who did say yeah so Sissy. Sissy. Dude, this is why we, this is why we talk about my advocacy group for the childless when she's like talking about the ring she's like i deserve the ring and we talk about this all the time i'm like oh they always talk down to her. Okay, you know what time it is? 
<laughs> Perfect segue. Girl, Girl get, get your, your Glock. It's, it's rapid fire time. time. Okay. Are you a school girl or are you going to get schooled girl? <laughs> I'm going to get schooled girl. Are you the voice of your generation or a voice of a generation? I am a voice of a generation. What's your favorite utensil? A fork. Why do you deserve the family ring? Because it fits perfectly on my finger. <laughs> Who would you want your boyfriend to be once a week? Steve Carell, 40 year old virgin. <laughs> <laughs> Does your grandma think you're loose? No. She thinks the opposite. Fuck, Mary, kill. Sissy, Margaret, Lorraine. Mar- Is it Margo? Margo. But you wrote... I wrote Margo. <laughs> you just chose I'm me. dyslexic and that has to be canon. Wait, wait. Sissy... Sissy, Margo, Margo Lorraine. Lorraine. I would... F- f- um... I would... This is your plea the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stop crying, stop crying. <laughs> it's plea the second. It's got the magnet laws here. <laughs> the right to bear arms. Yeah. Stop. So, um, I would fuck sissy. Mm. Yeah. Really? She's Just, a crier. Oh. No, I would fuck learn. Uh, yeah. no, no, um, From behind. Mar- the gay Margo. people love the fuck. Because Margo would be like, fuck. Yeah, yeah, that would be like a hot fuck. Yeah, it would be like very she, passionate. I hate to say that she is the hottest too. Yeah, so most boy like fuck also. Margo, Mary Lorraine, mm-hmm. kill kill sissy. Mm. I mean, kill sissy. Come on, I hope she overdoses on his pills she demanded. No, I would. I would fuck sissy. <laughs> Kill Lorraine, marry Margo. I'd I'm, love to just like start every morning with a giant fight. <laughs> yeah, it's a no, passionate no, I'm fight. on the same page as you though. Because Lorraine already is married to a gay guy, so she'd be used to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, um. <laughs> I'm used to this. <laughs> just, last question. Your next special. What kind of cheese to- would you want in your last cheese sandwich? Oh. I was actually thinking about that when she was in that line. Um I envisioned her eating like a classic American cheese, but that's not what I would want. I would want um, pepper jack. I was going to say pepper jack for you. When you were like, what kind of cheese? I was like, can I be psychic for one minute and say what cheese you would want? And my brain went to pepper jack. Really? I you was saw it? That. I was thinking pepper jack and then you said it. I play him a little bit psycho. Hey, mind meld. Mind meld. Um, what's that song from that uh, Shit's Creek? I'm a little bit. What's her name? I'm a little bit. Alexa. Alexa. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bit psycho. Psycho. Mm-hmm. Psychic. Psychic. Sorry about that. Um, okay, perfect. Okay, so now it's time for our last segment. Last segment of the okay. pod. That outfit in, in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. <laughs> this is where we compare Brooklyn then to Brooklyn now. Okay, so that outfit in a hospital. I think this is a really interesting conversation because we were, we were touching on it earlier, but what does bar culture look like now versus that? Like, you're, mm. are you... Bars are becoming less of a third space in a way that they traditionally were seen, I think, 10 years ago. And a third space is kind of like Starbucks library, like where people congregate outside of home and work. You think bars are less of third spaces? No, they spaces? are a classic third space. But I think in the sense where it's like, it's not overwhelming. Like bars have less alcohol sales now. They aren't getting the same level of attendance. People mm. go there um, and it feels like kind of a bit more mission oriented. Like they're, they're kind of more <laughs> business oriented in a way they, I don't think they were 10 years ago. Like, I, this is a really good example of this. I'm in Austin, Texas. Everything in Austin, Texas is a brew and brew, mm-hmm. which means beer at night, coffee in the morning. You're sitting at, at your, it's noon on a Wednesday. You're sitting there. There's a guy with a breakfast taco and a beer sitting right next to you, working on his laptop, sending something in crypto to someone. Um, that's not a third space. It's a we work. Do you know what I mean? Like, right, these right. bars are becoming more mission oriented than they were 10 years ago mm. like you're not just gonna bring hannah there i guess maybe in this town you would but like in new york city i don't see that to be the same general case like you go to a bar you're going to a bar event culture event culture is so big for the reason that you would ever go to a space like that like the reason you were at singers right last night is because your friend had a book coming out you would never probably be on singers there on a thursday casually like that true yeah or like people are going to bars with more missions in my opinion. Yeah, it's like more intentional. Yeah, I think so. Or something. That makes sense. Like, are you saying like you think that they, like Rebecca and Hannah would have met up somewhere else? I think they would have ended up at a bar, but I do think the intention would have been, like, it's like a person like you. Like, I think a, a bar isn't for a person like Hannah as much anymore. Right, right. Does that make sense? I, I've been really feeling this way towards 
bars. I mean, even in New York City compared to, I used to live in New Orleans and I feel like the bar culture is completely different here than it is um, there. Um, I was gonna say Hannah calling Adam on the home phone landline. Yes. Would never happen now. Nobody no, has landline. No. It's also crazy that she did that because she has a cell phone. Right. Mm. Girl. And also she would have I wonder like with social media, like how that would play into this. Totally they, they, they probably would have like post. argued about things like Totally. I think there's so much more now. Like the conversation they had is a conversation that would happen on TikTok. So they'd be using <sighs> lingo or like tests yes. that like are on TikTok. Totally. You know what it would have been? It would be, you know, on Instagram when you go to messages and it's like everyone has their little thought bubbles up there. Yeah. So like a car crash there. Car crash. Car crash. I don't that one. Literally, <laughs> that's so good. Or um, like, I don't know, would she like be like, I don't know, like posting? No, literally. It'd be she, like a story. She, like, she would be. <laughs> posting like, like cryptic things on her close friends yeah yeah like, so, grandma, totally oh my and then gosh she'd be like, close my, friends it ends with my grandma ate a cheese sandwich oh It'd my god her on the train that. going back being like jk she died <laughs> is so like something that would happen <laughs> Well, also, um, wow. Rebecca being on the phone like that, it would, of course, be the phone would be on the, the car now. If she would never be holding a phone like this, right, it would be right on the car, Apple CarPlay. Mm. Rebecca's Apple CarPlay, she has that kind of vibe to her. Yeah, yes. if you're in med school, you're Apple CarPlay. Mm-hmm. I thought, uh, I wrote down marriage is still a huge thing. Yeah. It's still <laughs> like that. I really do think this episode was so like marriage in a way where it's like, oh, people are really caring about this. But then I'm like, I guess people still do. Mm. women are still fighting to be respected in the medical space it's like we thought Grey's Anatomy would Grey's Anatomy would teach the world that women are doctors all the time Mm -hmm. but it's still like people are like oh med school girl interesting you're such a feminist girl I love it (laughs) Amelia will literally fight for female rights at every single conversation at every intersect in the city Amelia is literally standing there with a picket sign I love it. Yes. Evan read one chapter of a Bell Hooks book last week and started being so nice to me. I went through her parade. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that so funny? Yeah. Evan walks in and is like, I'm going to throw you a parade. <laughs> and the parade was really hard to get. Oh my people are, God. People are still marrying someone they hate, don't you think? Yeah. That probably will always be. That's all. I feel like... It, Part of probably life. I wonder if we're actually only like two generations away from that being less of a thing. Just because like if you think about it, like even our parents, like women couldn't own or open their own credit cards in like 1974. Right. So it's like our parents were really socialized. So it's like the woman really does have to get married. Whereas like millennials are the first generation where it's like there's no real rush, but they still feel the like pressure whereas like gen z is kind of redefining even what a relationship is right so it'll be like interesting to see like what happens in 50 years right like i'm curious like um because like we're saying like marriage is like still like it's huge Mm -hmm. but like i feel like so many people or at least for like from what i hear i mean maybe like not so much in new york city but maybe i'm wrong i don't know like people in their 20s are like really young my cousin like got married, married. At yeah it's like still like it's still very common to get married when you're 23 right i guess it is just on new york city so yeah. we don't have to worry about that <laughs> <laughs> also being queer of course we may never get married <laughs> right oh. i had to look away <laughs> <laughs> oh god but yeah that definitely yeah you're right i think that absolutely will yeah it's definitely interesting too like the the divorce of it all like tad and lorraine are gonna get divorced but it's like divorce has literally like quadrupled in the last like 30 years Mm -hmm. because women now feel empowered to like live financially independent lives and not feel pressure to stay in a relationship for like economic reasons so it'll be interesting to see like if there's a generation of girls, because we're still socialized to get married, but if there's a right. generation of girls that are like, I'm not even going to do the first step. Right. Oh. Because they're seeing like, whatever. Amelia, can I ask you, do you ever, do you see yourself married? No. You don't have to answer that. I don't think so. I mean, my mom's getting divorced and never getting remarried has definitely like imprinted on me oh, where it's right. like, and like, I feel like very raised by like the Lorelai Gilmore of it all, where it's like, I want to be in charge of everything. I don't want anyone to take care of me. I don't have to like have any other person's like brunette with blue eyes. You're Lorelai Gil. 
I really just want to be like Chelsea Handler. Like, I want to be rich. I want to take everyone I know on a trip. Right. I mean, even when Chelsea Handler and Joe Coy fell in love, I was like, maybe I will get married. And then when they broke up, I was like, and I'll never be getting married. Yeah. (laughs) As soon as they broke up, I was like, done. Oh, I'm not even thinking about it one more time. I mean, I really thought the same way Amelia did forever. Not that I I necessarily know I can get married, but in my first relationship now, it's only been like three months. I would uh, love to love to get married, but it's like every woman I know who's been married, it's ruined her life. Yeah. So. I don't know. Yeah. All love. All love. Should we end it there? That's really an insane now. way to end. But it could be really fun. Um, Richard, do you have anything that we know? If would not, you get married? Yeah, sorry. sorry, sorry. Yesterday, I told, someone asked me that at the bar and I said, uh, yes. Was it I was like, guy? I was like, yeah. I, Did you need no. it? I don't know. Sometimes I... Um, Sometimes I, I think, I think I, if, when I say yes, I think it's more so to just like allow myself to think of the possibility Totally. just to be like, you could, if you wanted to, you really wanted to, Are you, you dating could, or have no, you been dating? <laughs> no, no, I've never been in a relationship. I don't really have so much experience totally. with that area of life. Totally. So I feel like, I don't know, like I... I'm in no rush. Yeah. No, you don't have to be. But I'm like, I uh, I think I just said yes just to be like, let me like keep it open. Mm. I'm like, I don't know who 10 right, years, like, who I am in 10 years. Will be like. Yeah, like who the, who I'll meet along the way. And... I feel like you're like discovering yourself right now in a new way too. Like you're, I don't want to speak for you, but I feel like you are going through this. I mean, you join comedy like later in life and mm-hmm. you find this really transformative experience. Later through in it. life, what, like 26? <laughs> <laughs> that is no, later No, for some. like honestly, I started performing like really d- doing it at 30. Mm. And that like, is later. Yeah. I guess yeah. it is later. Yeah. And it's not late. No, it's, it's but later. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it's like, I, it's, I think that's a beautiful part of living, especially in New York, where it's like that you don't have to have a clear cut. You don't. And like, I've, I'm learning, I've learned that like, just like, you can pivot, you can, you're going to like in in one, in an area of life, you know, more than one area of life. Like it'll just happen. And like, it's like, don't, I don't know. I think I'm just like, at least like with the, my like trajectory of like working, you know, moving to New York for this intention of like, oh, I'm going to pursue this lane and do Mm -hmm. this thing. And I have these big visions for it to like kind of just life unfolding and all these different series of events happening that just like led to me kind of just wanting to get into this other thing I've Mm -hmm. always wanted to do that I'm like, oh, I'm just doing it. And I'm just like gotten, I don't know. I feel like it has like opened me up more and there's more that I'm like, exploring about myself like i don't know i think like when you're like or at least when i was like in my early 20s like it was so easy to think that i'm like i know who i that i'm like this is set in stone Mm -hmm. that i'm like fixed these these things and tendencies and traits like everything's fixed Mm -hmm. and i'll always be this way or something like that and i think if anything as i've gotten older like just more things have changed maybe like sobriety is like you know a big part of it too or i don't know just these different transformations that i'm just like oh like sometimes i feel like i'm like i don't know right <laughs> like anything goes a little bit <laughs> but but i think um i don't know i say that to like just keep open that i'm like i know i'm gonna keep changing and i know 10 years from now it could be anything like maybe i won't even be doing comedy at all maybe mm-hmm. I, maybe i'll be gardening or i have no idea mm-hmm. But I'm like, maybe I'll be married. I don't know. Maybe I'll have kids. Literally. I don't know. The more you learn, the less you know. Yeah, it does feel that way. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And that's on flow. And that's Um, on flow. flow. Richard, thanks so much for being on. Thank you so much for having me. Literally, we ate. (laughs) Yeah. We really did. Um, Oh my God. Literally, on our hands and knees, begging you to see Richard live. It's literally amazing and it will change your life. Check it out. Follow them on Instagram. Everything is linked in the description. Um, We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.